Hey, hey, don't belittle my feelings. I'm in a very sensitive place, and I will kick your ass. Oh, come on, Charlie. So you struck out with a woman. It happens. Believe me, it happens. <laughs> and when it does, the best thing to do is to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and curse God for making you the way you are. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I've heard a lot about you. And I've heard a lot about you, too. And I gotta say, I am pleasantly surprised. Oh, really? How so? Well, uh, Alan tells me you're a judge and a professor, and mm -hmm. quite frankly, I wasn't expecting someone so, uh... So what, Charlie? Um, uh, yummy. <laughs> That was wrong, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, that was wrong. What I, what I meant was I was expecting you to be more, you know, dry. <laughs> but you're not. You're actually kind of moist. <laughs> Yo, dude, what up? Just follow my lead. Oh, this is awesome. Ah. Uh, just a little surf shack where I keep my board, beer, and brother. <laughs> How they breaking today, Broheim? How are what breaking? Dude smokes way too much weed. <laughs> the waves, Poindexter. Oh, oh, the, the waves. The, uh, the waves are... gnarly? <laughs> All right, let's hit it. No, I intend to. <laughs> Hi, Tina. Long time, huh? Charlie Harper. What do you want? I know things didn't end well between us. Really? You know? I thought they ended perfectly. We spent a week in Cancun having great sex every day. Flew back to Los Angeles. You told me you'd call me tomorrow, and it's been... What do you know? A year and a half. <laughs> Women like Sherry already know they're beautiful and desirable. You're not gonna score any points by telling her. Okay. And don't be in a hurry to spill your guts. She doesn't need to hear your whole life story before you get to the salad. Got it. And speaking as someone who knows your life story, I'd say she doesn't need to hear it at all. <laughs> right, right, I'll be cool, aloof, distant. She's here, she's here, she's here! <laughs> hey, Ellen, you wanna catch a movie tonight? Can't. I am taking a lady friend to the Hollywood Bowl for a romantic evening under the stars with Michael Buble and three runners up from American Idol. What's in the bag? A noose? No, it's a picnic basket, a fried chicken, a bottle of Merlot, and my autograph hound in case I get lucky. Just out of curiosity, where do you find women like that? And, and more importantly, how do you get them to go to bed with you? You really want to know? Yeah, well, what's your secret? Well, you see, Alan, it's like this. I got a knack. That's not a secret. Well, I didn't think so, but you asked. When I'm just dating one woman at a time, if she dumps me... When she dumps you. <laughs> Either way, I have to start from scratch finding a new woman. However, when I'm dating two women, if one of them dumps me... When one of them dumps you? Either way, I'm not alone. Wait a second, wait a second. You're saying that it's advantageous to date more than one woman at a time? Good Lord, man, you're a genius. <laughs> Always break up in a public place. That way you avoid having a scene. That makes sense. When? Before the dessert menu comes out. Otherwise, you can find yourself with a lap full of hot coffee, which is not as much fun as it sounds. That doesn't sound fun. It sounds fun if you run a couple of donuts. Most and I have, have this chemistry, and it's really hard not to act on it. Yeah, it's tough when you work together. Right. You don't crap where you eat. I know. You don't dip your pen in company ink. And you never bang a woman who owns a snake or a bird. After dinner, when you walk to the car, open her door, wait for her to say thank you, smile, lean in, and kiss her. Oh, nice. Hi, Alan. You ready? 
You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen, and I don't deserve you. That's another way to go.